Hey, what's up? This is Ben with Wad Prep, and today we're going to talk about the 2019 CrossFit Open and how the new changes affect us. When I say us, I'm talking about normal athletes that aren't necessarily slated to go to the CrossFit Games. What are the changes and how do they affect us? That is what today is all about. Really quick, if you're someone who's planning to do the CrossFit Open, whether you're planning to actually register and participate in the Open, or if you're someone who's just gonna do it for fun with your friends, or maybe with the gym that you currently go to, make sure you go to wadprep.com open, where you can sign up to get our free strategy guide each week that a new CrossFit Open workout is released. So when CrossFit Open 19.1 is released, we're gonna work our butt off here at Wad Prep to make sure that you get the strategy guide delivered to your email inbox as quickly as possible. Plus, you're gonna get some bonus videos that we're not gonna release publicly, like how to warm up and how to recover from the event. So if you want that, along with the complete written strategy guide, again, go to wadprep.com open, and that will come your way once the workouts are released. So really quick, let's cover a few things. In this video, I'm gonna talk about just a couple changes off the top of my head. It's not gonna be an extensive list. It's just a couple changes that you and I might need to know as we go into this year's Open. And number two, I'm going to predict a couple changes that we might see with the shifting of the CrossFit HQ staff and initiatives. So a lot of things are going on behind the scenes. That's what this video is all about. We're also going to talk about what movements you can expect to see in this year's Open, both using our knowledge from the Opens in the past and some trends and some movements that we're gonna see coming up here in the future. So let's get into it. Number one, what are the changes of the CrossFit Open this year? So no longer are we trying to qualify for regionals. For 99.99% of the people watching this video, including myself, uh, regionals were not a thing that we were worried about, so it doesn't really affect too many people. The only thing that you should consider is that if you happen to live in a very small country. So maybe you live in a country where there's only a handful of CrossFit gyms, there are very few affiliates. Well then, good news, you might be able to make it to the CrossFit Games. So I know there are a few people watching from uh, Brunei, which is a, a really small country, and I'm sure there's some really competitive, awesome athletes there. But the entire state of Rhode Island probably has five times more CrossFitters than Brunei does. So if you could win the state of Rhode Island, you'd very easily maybe be able to win uh, a smaller country's CrossFit Games bid. So just keep that in mind. If you live in a smaller country, I'm not here to pick on Brunei. I'm not here to pick on any smaller country. It's actually really exciting. CrossFit is making a move to make CrossFit and the CrossFit Games a more global enterprise. So instead of just seeing 95% of the CrossFit Games athletes from the USA, from Canada, from Australia, instead we're expanding the slice of the pie. Oh, don't let me forget Europe and all the countries there. Uh, but we're expanding. We're expanding to get some bids from other countries. I forget what the exact number is, but there's a lot more countries that could potentially send someone to the games if they so choose. So that's pretty exciting for people who live in these smaller countries. But again, for most people watching this, it doesn't affect us. Next, there's a lot of sanctional events going on. There's some really high level events that are qualifying people for the games. That's a big change. Less people will qualify through the open now. Now we're gonna have more people qualifying through these sanctionals. Again, it doesn't really affect us for you and I, for the people who are just doing CrossFit for fun and for fitness, it doesn't affect us too much. So with those things in mind, another change I wanna talk about is the initiative of CrossFit HQ. Greg Glassman has come on record and talked about how he hasn't necessarily been so enthused with the direction of the CrossFit Games. And with that, we've seen a lot of firings in the CrossFit HQ staff. So a lot of the media, a lot of the games, commentators and things like that have, have been let go from CrossFit in a shift to focus more on health and wellness rather than the CrossFit as a sport. Now, I'm not here to make conclusions about whether that's good or bad. All I know is that it is a change. So if CrossFit is focusing less on the CrossFit Games and more on CrossFit health, perhaps we're going to see a, a potential tweak of the programming. We'll get to that in a second, but just know that when it comes to doing the CrossFit Open, I really want you to focus on one thing, and that is focus on what you can control. So we can't control what workouts they release. We can't control the qualifying process. We can't control uh, where we have uh, native passport citizenship to to determine whether we can qualify through some obscure way in some small country. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that we focus on our training. We focus on being as prepared as possible for all of the movements that we're about to talk about. And most importantly, we're here to have fun. 
in my opinion, the CrossFit Open is best used to compare you yourself to yourself. So what I mean by that is when I do the CrossFit Open and there's a repeat workout from years past, I love seeing progress. It's really fascinating to watch people who go year after year, they, they hit a workout, like I did the CrossFit Open in 2011, and when any workout from 2011, 2012 is repeated, I can see, wow, I'm getting older, I'm moving maybe a little slower, but my fitness is improving because I'm getting a better score. So all those things considered, focus on what you can control, and really all of these repositionings and game staff changes and rule changes and stuff like that, you can't control that. So it's not something I've focused on and it's not something really you should focus on. So next, let's move to some potential movement changes. First, let's talk about which movements we can expect in the open. And that's because they've happened in every single other open. There's a comprehensive list right here of all the movements that have shown up in every single open. There's also a few more movements that have shown up in every one of them except for one. And there's also some trending movements like the calorie row and handstand push-ups. So all of these movements, they're coming again. They should be expected and you should be prepared for them. If you're not prepared for them, you need to go watch more of our videos and maybe even take one of our paid programming courses that will help you prepare for all the individual movements of CrossFit like double unders, bar muscle ups, ring muscle ups, handstand push ups, maybe even handstand walks. All of those things we can help you with. That's what Wad Prep's all about to help people move from the scale division to the RX division. So with that being said, it's pretty obvious which movements will be coming this year in the CrossFit Open. I'm not expecting uh, double unders, toes to bar, bar muscle ups, ring muscle ups, and you know things like that to all go away. We're gonna see at least a handful of those things, if not all of them, like we have in every Open in the past. What I do want to draw your attention to is potentially some shifts and new movements that we might see. Greg Glassman has come on record and stated that he's frustrated with the amount of kipping pull-ups that he sees in CrossFit gyms. He says people should always start strict and then move to kipping. So potentially with his involvement increasing in the open and him making a lot of executive changes, maybe we'll see some strict gymnastic movements show themselves this year. I don't think they're gonna be very easy to judge. Uh, and a lot of the movements we've seen in the past opens have had very uh, simple standards for judging. I could only imagine if they tried introducing strict movements, how difficult that's gonna be to judge. So who knows if they'll do it, but I could theoretically see CrossFit HQ programming some strict movements to encourage people to learn strict over kipping. I think strict handstand pushups might be a great addition, and it actually could be something that's pretty easy to judge. Your knees, your hips need to be locked out, so hey, I'm all for strict handstand pushups. Maybe CrossFit HQ will introduce those along with some other movements. Sorry to interrupt this message, but I have a special announcement from my dog. Murphy would like to tell you that you need to hit the subscribe button down there. Thank you. Another common speculation of new movements that we will see are simply variations of dumbbell movements. There's been a new movement that's been popularized this year called the Devil's Press, basically where you're doing kind of like a, a burpee, kettlebell swing, double-handed dumbbell overhead thing. They're really tough uh, and they're, it's also a great movement. It's like a, a very challenging ground to overhead. We might see that. We might see uh, double dumbbell box step overs or just dumbbell box step overs. We might see dumbbell burpee thrusters. There's all kinds of different dumbbell movements. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some more variations of those as well. Another thing to note is we could see some more advanced movements. I personally don't think that's gonna happen with the way that CrossFit HQ has been moving towards health rather than elite elitism fitness and super competition fitness. So we could see things like triple unders. A lot of people have kind of been murmuring that that could potentially happen, but I'm not too confident that it will. Okay, so we've talked about the movements, some old school movements we're definitely gonna see, some potential new movements like strict gymnastics and devil's press and even maybe some triple unders. One thing I want to talk about now is what kind of workouts can we expect? This is total speculation, and again, I the only reason I'm making this video is because so many people have been asking my opinion on what's next. Again, I want you to focus on what you can control, and what you can control is being prepared. So being able to do all the movements that we just mentioned, that's what you need. Anyway, let's get into it. What can we expect? I'm personally predicting more old school CrossFit. 
When I say that, I'm talking 21, 15, nine. Lots of workouts that are for time. 10 to 12 minute AMRAPs of simple movements like burpees and thrusters. I don't think we're gonna see lots of super complex uh, leveled workouts. We, we saw that Dave Castro had a tendency to, to make some pretty complicated workouts and I thought they were really fun, but I just don't see that happening this year. Rather than getting cute with our programming design, I have a feeling Greg Glassman's like, hey, make it simple, make them AMRAPs, make them old school CrossFit, and hey, maybe even make them benchmark workouts. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a couple benchmark workouts show up this year. So if you see workouts like Fran, if you see workouts like Diane, make sure you go check our strategy videos for those specific workouts that we've already released here on YouTube. I'll make sure that the link to those videos are in the comments below. So could we potentially see some benchmark workouts? Could we see a Cindy? Could we see Fran? Maybe we'll even see a hero workout. Maybe CrossFit HQ will take a page out of the, the old school book and introduce something like JT, which is a workout that could potentially show up because it involves a lot of strict gymnastic movements. So who knows? Again, this is all speculation. We can only sit here and, and guess what sort of trends we're going to see based on what CrossFit HQ is telling us, which is not very much. But again, I want you to focus on a few things for this year's Open. Number one, you need to have a lot of fun. This is not about you versus other people. It's about you versus yourself. It's about showing and quantifying your fitness and how much you've improved over the past few years. Next, I want you to focus on what you can control. I've said it probably 10 times in this video, maybe even more, but you cannot control all of the different things that CrossFit HQ is doing. You can't control who's in charge. You can't control what the workouts are. You can't control what your buddy submits as a score. You can't control if people are cheating or shaving reps. A lot of people get so anxious and frustrated about it, and I understand, but what really matters is focusing on yourself and making sure that you're prepared as possible, and then you go into the workout with a good attitude and that you're focused on maximizing your performance, and we're gonna do our best here at Wide Prep to help you out with that. So. With all of those things in mind, I hope that you'll join me in participating in the CrossFit Open. Whether you register or not, I don't really care. Obviously, CrossFit HQ would love your $20, uh, but really, whether you register or not, do the workouts, have fun with your friends and fellow uh, gym members, and have a good time. We don't wanna lose sight of what CrossFit is all about, which is improving our fitness no matter your skill level. That's why when we release our strategy guides, I'm not just doing it for people who are trying to make it to the CrossFit games. I'm not just doing it for those masters athletes who follow Wad Prep who are trying to make it to the online qualifier. I'm not doing it for just those people. I make tips and tricks for the scaled masters division, the scaled teens division, the normal scaled division, all of the different masters divisions, no matter whether you've been doing CrossFit for one year, three years, maybe even one day, we're here to help you and improve your fitness and maximize your open performance. So I'm off my soapbox. Go to wattprep.com slash open if you want to receive the complete strategy guides for each CrossFit open movement this year. We'll deliver it to your email inbox along with some bonus videos on how to warm up, cool down, recover, and the mental aspect of hitting these workouts, which is another really important thing. So go do that. Last but not least, thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I really wanna to get to 100,000 subscribers and I will be doing something amazing. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm doing something awesome once we hit 100,000 subscribers. So please hit subscribe if you haven't. Spread the word with all of your box mates, your CrossFit gym friends. In the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are about the changes. You can throw in your speculation. What movements do you think are coming down the pipeline? Have fun in the comments and just let me know your overall thoughts. And I'm hoping that some people down there are just like, hey, I don't care about the changes. I'm here to have fun. Uh, so if you write that, you're cheating because I just told you to write that. So tell me your thoughts below and I'll see you next week for CrossFit Open 19.1.